Welcome to Module 2 of the Administration Code Regulation 703-KAR 5-080. My name is Pam Powers and I'm with the Office of Assessment and Accountability. Module 2 will focus on test security and touch on DAC and BAC responsibilities. Please note, the page numbers on the slides represent the information found in the regulation document itself. District Assessment Coordinators, or DACs, and Building Assessment Coordinators, or BACs, are the authorities when dealing with state-required testing. The responsibility of managing test preparation, a successful test administration, and return shipping falls to the DACs and BACs. DACs, or BACs, shall schedule the test administration, arrange for adequate staff to administer the assessment, prepare accurate student testing rosters and seating charts, and ensure that all assessment materials are kept secure before, during, and after testing sessions. Test security should be a top priority throughout the testing process. From the receipt of materials through test administration and the return of materials by all parties involved with creating or handling of the testing materials. Secure test materials will vary slightly by assessment, but let's look at our most prevalent test, KPREP, to better understand what are secure materials. For online testing, you will see test tickets in seal codes created from the Pearson Access Next or PAN, P-A-N, system for TestNav, which is used by students to test. Once these items are printed, you must keep them secure until they are distributed on the test day. After the test ticket and seal codes have been used, they will be returned to the back to be securely destroyed. If you are dealing with a paper pencil test or the accommodated test kits, you will have test booklets containing the test questions and answer documents to secure. In some cases, the test booklet and answer document are combined into one booklet. Think KPREP Science. You'll notice that scratch paper is available to students in both the online and paper pencil testing formats. Scratch paper is considered a secure material since test questions or answers could be gleaned from these papers. The move to online testing has allowed schools to print the test ticket on a single page so that the student may use the rest of the page as scratch paper. This reduces the amount of paper which must be secured. Now that we have a better understanding of what secure materials could be, let's see what the regulation says. If you turn to page six in the Administration Code Regulation, you will find the test materials section, which is divided into the acceptable and not acceptable columns. As we go through this training, the regulation page numbers are displayed on the slide to help you quickly reference the area. What is an acceptable and expected practice? Test administrators need test administration manuals in advance of testing to read and prepare for test sessions. Following test manual directions and reading the scripts aloud is vitally important for a successful standardized administration and to avoid committing an allegation. Scripts are updated yearly and are unique to each assessment. Reading all parts of the script helps ensure that the student's test results are valid and reliable. What are not acceptable practices? Anyone having the test booklets prior to testing without authorization from the DAC or the BAC. Why wouldn't you want to have test booklets early? What would be the first thing that comes into your mind if you saw someone with a test booklet before testing? Would you think that they are looking at the test questions? Maybe that review session for students concentrated on the test questions, giving their students an advantage over my students. Remember, students have the right to valid and reliable test results, which covering test questions in advance would negate. Do you think someone would file an allegation if they witness someone with the test booklets prior to testing? 
Yes, it has happened. To protect yourself, do not handle secure test materials unless asked by the DAC or BAC to do so. Handling the materials during the test administration or during the check-in or check-out procedure is expected. Handling those same materials at other times should be by direct request from the DAC or the BAC. This brings us to the second entry. It is not acceptable to make test booklets available to test administrators before the first scheduled day of testing or not keeping them secure between test sessions. This was designed to protect teachers and test proctors or administrators from the perception of wrongdoing. Does your school allow you to store test materials in your classroom? If so, the test materials left in the classroom must be double locked, such as a lockable storage unit inside a locked room. A double lock is only required for secure materials being stored in classrooms. Access to these locks shall be limited to authorized personnel. Secure materials stored in other areas, such as vaults or a counselor's office, do not require a double lock. When not being used for a scheduled testing session, all assessment materials shall be stored in a secure location with access granted to authorized personnel only. In other words, please don't leave test materials outside of locked storage unattended. Let's continue with more confidential test content. For the K-PREP assessment, the Kentucky Academic Standards, or CAS, K-A-S, contain the minimum required standards that all Kentucky students should have the opportunity to learn before graduating. CAS helps ensure that all students throughout Kentucky are provided with common content and have the opportunities to learn at high levels. It is expected that teachers would know and teach concepts from these standards. Another acceptable practice is the visual scanning of student response booklets during or after a test session. The test administrator may look at the student's answer document to see if the responses are being recorded in the correct location, but should not be checking, grading, or scoring student responses or looking at test content for the purpose of learning or memorizing secure test items. It is not acceptable to discuss, take notes of, or score test items. Have you heard the term alert paper? It refers to the student writing or drawing about suicide, abuse, etc. to him or herself or others. If you see this during or after a test session, Remember, it's all right to visually scan student response booklets or computer screens when monitoring the session. What should you do? The preferred response to seeing an alert paper is to alert your back or your DAC and allow that person to make any copies needed. Why can't the teacher or someone else make a, an alert paper copy? If you see someone standing at the copier with a test booklet, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Somebody's making a copy of the test. You immediately report that test allegation. When investigated, it was determined that no allegation had occurred. The teacher was making a copy of an alert paper. This incident has happened in the past which is why it will be the DAC or the BAC making a copy instead of one of us. What happens after the copies of an alert paper are made? It is expected that anyone who needs to examine the alert paper, such as a parent or child protective services, should do so at the school after signing a non-disclosure form. All copies of alert papers are considered secure test materials. Once the issue has been resolved, the copies are to be destroyed in a secure manner. Besides the alert paper exception, it is not acceptable to reproduce secure test materials in whole or in part 
or paraphrasing in any way. Reproducing could include such things as taking photos, making notes, copying, posting to social media, etc., etc. Also, not acceptable is showing test items to anyone not administering the test or revealing test items. This includes a verbal discussion of test items. Allegation alert. Discussing test items in any manner which reveals the content of the item is considered an allegation. For example, two teachers who are administering the KPREP are in the faculty lounge. They start talking about an item on the reading test and reveal the passage and some of the questions being asked. Even though both have signed non-disclosure agreements and are administering the same assessment, discussion of test items, passages, etc. is not acceptable and is a violation of administration code. What should they have done? If you believe an item or passage is flawed or incorrect, contact your back. Give your building assessment coordinator the content area, section, test item number, and what is wrong, such as no correct answer. Notice that we never reveal the test item content. Our last not acceptable practice is using the knowledge of test items to prepare students for the assessment. This ties back to not having the test booklets prior to the test administration and not taking notes when visually scanning the test booklets. Our final acceptable practice deals with scratch paper. On tests where students are allowed to use scratch paper, the scratch paper is considered a secure test material and should be collected and securely destroyed after testing. Blank or graph paper may be used for scratch paper. With the advent of online testing, some schools are choosing to use the test ticket printed full page for each student to use a scratch paper instead. What you choose to use as scratch paper is a local decision. Let's look further at the handling of secure test materials. There are times when test materials will leave the school for offsite testing. This may include computers, paper test booklets, audio CDs, etc. For materials being transported and used for home or hospital administration or offsite administration, test security must be maintained. It is not acceptable to leave materials with students in a home or hospital setting. Trained staff are expected to be present when secure materials are present. Students utilizing paper or pencil testing may be using non-standard responses, which are maintained on a flash drive or CD until all testing is complete to ensure that responses are not lost prior to the return shipment of printed responses with secure test materials. After testing is complete and student responses have been prepared for return shipment, the electronic versions are to be deleted or destroyed. Electronic student responses are to be temporary and not kept for review past the current test window. As a best practice, one of our elementary teachers said, if it doesn't move, put your name on it. This applies to test books, answer documents, and scratch paper. Each year, at least one test proctor gives the wrong materials to a student or two or more, sometimes a whole classroom. This can occur with online testing if the student doesn't receive the correct test ticket to log into the session. Instructing students to put their names on scratch paper and retaining the paper until testing is complete are beneficial safety measures in case there is any need to reference it before materials are returned to the vendor. We've covered the acceptable practices. Now let's look at the not acceptable practices con concerning secure test materials. It is not acceptable to take test materials out of the school or district building for any reason except for approved off-site testing. Bubbling demographics or modifying materials for the alternate assessment shall be completed on school property. Allegation tip. 
anyone can report an allegation. If you are seeing the secure te test materials outside of a school or a district building, someone might assume that you have nefarious motives, such as changing student answers. This is the perception, just like the alert paper in the copier. In reality, you are leaving to do offsite testing. Work with your back on how to protect secure materials when transporting for offsite or homebound testing. If a student is using accommodated testing, which produces electronic versions of test questions or answers, these materials must be destroyed following testing. Maintenance of these types of materials after the test window is an administration code violation. Lastly, a student shouldn't transport or move his or her own test materials from one location to another. For example, a student receiving extended time needs to move to another room to complete the assessment. An adult who has received administration code training should transport and escort the student to the secondary location to finish. This concludes module two of six of the administration code regulation. Please review all six modules to complete the administration code training. If you have specific questions about the administration code training module two or any module related questions, please feel free to contact KDE DAC information at dacinfo at education.ky.gov or call us at 502-564-4394. Thank you for your time and participation.